All right, so now let's talk about how we can remove and replace things within our strings. Um, we're going to cover 7.7, 7.8, and 7.9 from the focus parts of the chapter. All right, so remove actually works a little bit like how substring does, but rather than giving you the substring, it actually just removes it completely, just cuts it out and then pastes together the left and the right side. Sort of like how uh, you could cut a piece out of a tape, maybe a cassette, maybe a reel-to-reel, -reel, whatever, and then you just cut a segment out and then tape the left segment or the left remaining bit and the right remaining bit together with a special tape, and then it works just like new. Um, similar idea with what we're doing right here. So you define a substring by giving the starting index and optionally the length of the substring. Uh, and then it will take that substring starting at your starting index and remove it completely. Uh, if you do not specify the length, it removes to the end of the string. So it just cuts the uh, very end off. If it is specified, if you do say what the length is, it removes that many characters. So if you specify five, it will remove five characters. It's sort of doing, if you remember in the substring video when I was showing off the words convoluter, um, it's sort of what I was doing by setting the um, words list equal to itself minus the first word and that string, right? I could also do the same thing. You know, I, I did that by using a substring to just get everything after the space, but I could use remove to remove that first word and the space, everything before the, the, uh, the space if I wanted to. So that's how that works. All right, so um, I have my string city equals Santa Maria example again. Um, if I remove the substring starting at index five, that's going to be space Maria, so all I'm left with is Santa. If I removed starting at six, uh, it would remove Maria and then we would have Santa space, but I'm starting it at five here. Uh, if I remove the substring starting at six of length two, I end up with Santa space Rhea because six and seven, uh, M and A are actually removed here. Removing starting at zero of length five, would end up with a string space Maria because I'm removing the first five characters, S-A-N-T-A, but the space actually sticks, sticks around because it is the sixth character in the string. So in order to get rid of that, I would remove um, from zero to six, or I could do uh, uh, of length uh, of the index of the space. You know, I, I call dot index of, I pass in the space, it gives five, and then I add one to that. Um, and that would be the length that I could remove to just get Maria. Uh, I can also dot remove, uh, pass in the index of the space of, and then a uh, sub string of length one to just remove the space entirely if I wanted to stick the two words together. So that is an option if you want to get rid of a uh, particular space character. Now, of course, this would only get rid of the first space in the string, since I'm working with index of. If the string had multiple spaces, I would have to keep on removing all of those spaces using this command until index of became negative one. Now, uh, sort of like with substring before, um, the remove method throws when the starting index is invalid, so it's less than zero or it's greater than or equal to the length. And also when, if I specify the count, it throws when the count is less than zero or the start plus the count are greater than or equal to the uh, length. Okay, I just realized up until now, um, I've been saying int start plus int count is greater than or equal to the length. Uh, that should be insert plus int count minus one. Please make a note of that. It should be int start plus int count minus one. That's very important. All right, so 
what I have here is the um, program I showed off before that actually twisted all the words around. So if I do test one, test two, test three, just like that, then it displays test three, comma space test two, comma space test one. Now, if I want to use remove instead of uh, substring, I have this command right here that I just paste in. Uh, you have to set it equal to it, uh, itself with the removed substring because this doesn't actually modify string words, which is a very good thing, by the way, that none of these modify their strings. But it creates a new string, so then you have to take this new string and set it equal or back into the variable. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to remove starting at zero uh, with a length of int index plus one. Dot trim, just in case. Reason why is say I do test one, test two, and test three like that. Uh, when I'm removing the first word, test one right here, uh, int index is going to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five right here. But if I removed just the first five uh, characters of the string, I would only be removing T E S T one test one like that. And the space would still be hanging around. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing because we are trimming right here. And because we're trimming, we're getting rid of any extra spaces and all that, but it's nice to just really be sure that you're getting rid of that space. And then using the trim as like a backup or plan or something like that. I, I guess, I don't know. That's how I think about it. It could work either way, but if I do this, it still works perfectly fine. The first word is getting removed perfectly fine. So because of how we're updating string words like that using remove, we're doing it equivalently to uh, that substring right here. Now, if I wasn't using dot trim and I wasn't doing the index plus one like that, this would present more of a problem. Test one, test two, test three. Rearrange the words, and we have an issue. We actually have a uh, infinite loop right here. Reason why is because we're only removing. Let's see. Oh, I can't even. I always forget. I can't even move the uh, window. We're only removing the first five characters since five is the index of the string, and what we're left with is a space test two, space, test three. And that space is hanging around because we're not using dot trim. So then we go back, uh, we recalculate what int index is and we get an int index is zero. So we go back up here. The prefix up here is the substring from zero to zero, or my apologies. It is starting at zero and of length zero. So it's an empty string and string words is just we're removing the substring of size the of size zero, so we're removing the empty string from the front. Nothing's changing here. String words doesn't update at all, which means that int index will still end up being zero, which means that string words doesn't update, which means int index doesn't update, and so on and so forth. So you have to be careful. But uh, yeah, that is if we stop this and we even if I just put dot trim here. That would work fine, but it's a little sloppy. Uh, see, yeah, it works. It works fine. It's a little sloppy though because you're relying on dot trim to remove the space every time. Why not just uh, remove the space that you know is going to be there and use dot trim to clean up any bad user input? Like if I did test one space 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 test two space test three. That's a good way to use dot trim there. But yeah, that's an example of the remove method right here in use on a more familiar program. Hey, uh, speaking of trim though, let's talk more about trim. We've used it before to remove space characters from the beginning and the end of strings, like what we saw before in multiple cases in the program I just showed off. However, we can also specify a list of characters that trim and trim start and trim end 
can actually remove. So we don't have to specify any arguments here and they will just remove spaces. But if we specify a list of characters as arguments inside of the method calls for each of them, then we can say, hey, if you see dollar signs and asterisks and pound signs, any of those, then remove those from the beginning or the end or from both sides. So that's super helpful, something we haven't really played with yet. Now, um, just to be fully clear, the trim start method removes from the start, the trim end removes from the end, and the trim method removes from both sides. All of them return a new string. They don't modify string name or whatever string is calling them. So yes, if trim characters are not specified, it removes spaces until it doesn't see a space. It just removes all the spaces at the beginning and all the spaces at the end, but not spaces in the middle. Otherwise, it removes every instance of every single uh, character inside of the list that you list in all of the arguments. And each one will stop when they see the first instance of a character not in the list. So if you specify asterisks and dollar signs, if it sees a number or a letter or a pound sign or a space or whatever, as soon as, it, as soon as any of these methods sees one of those, it will stop completely, even if there are more on the other side of that character. Okay, so if I have the string dollar 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 thirty four dollar dollar and call the dot trim method with nothing passed into it, it gives back dollar 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 thirty four dollar dollar because trim with no arguments is looking for spaces. However, if I pass in the dollar character, not the string, the dollar character, it actually get, gives us back 34. It removes the dollar signs on the left and the dollar signs on the right. But it would not remove spaces if there were spaces there, so be wary of that. If I have dollar sign four asterisks, 340.56, and I call the trim left method, passing in a dollar sign character and an asterisk character as separate arguments, not the string containing dollar sign asterisk, but the two characters separately, it gives just the number 340.56. It gets rid of the dollar sign, it gets rid of the asterisks. Uh, if I have dollar sign 1234340.56, and pass in the dollar sign character and the asterisk character. It just gives us back 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 0, 0. 0.56. It doesn't matter that there's no asterisks in the, in the original string. No errors thrown or anything like that. It just gets rid of the dollar sign, which is really helpful. It's a good, like, just in case kind of thing. You can use these arguments just in case these bad symbols are there. Now, if I have 25 two asterisks two as a string and I try to trim right and get rid of all the asterisk characters it doesn't change the string at all it just gives 25 asterisk asterisk two there's asterisks in the middle but none on the right side so who cares uh 10 percent dot trim right getting rid of the percent sign gives us just 10 which is super helpful for working with things like uh percentage values in you know, list boxes or something like that. Also, what's important is if I did 10% and I called trim left, giving a percent sign, it would give us back 10% because there's no percent signs on the left side of this string. All right, so what I have here is a quick tax calculator. Uh, very helpful. I can put in the amount of sales that I made, let's say $1,000, um, and select some of these different rates all three of them, and I can calculate, and I have a sales tax of zero dollars. That's fantastic. I love not paying sales tax. Uh, what we have is a problem here with some arithmetic, so let's uh, figure out what's going on. Why don't we? All right, so I am currently in a breakpoint right now, and we have, um, let's see, double sales is 1,000, which is the number I typed in, so that's good. Uh, double rate is zero, which is weird. I'm pretty sure I selected uh, 
but no matter what the value was, it's either 2, 3, or 4%, all those should be non-zero. So let's see what's going on here. Uh, let's see, double rate. Let's see. We have the string rate, which is 2%. And then we try to parse string rate into double rate. So 2% becomes zero. Well, that's the problem here, right? Is that string rate, the value that we're getting out of this rates box right here is 2%. Not just 2, it's 2%. So, how would we get rid of that percent sign? Well, we actually know what we can do. I'll get rid of this real quick. I will put a trim end at the very end of all this. So I get the selected item, I convert it to a string, and then I trim all the percent signs off the end. And then I take the rate and put it in the double. And hopefully, since there's no percent signs on there, that should be good. In fact, we know that there's uh, all these percent signs. Here we go. For uh, double rate as double from 0 0.02 to 0 0.04, step 0 0.01, using a for rate, uh, a for loop to fill out the list box with rates on load, and they're storing it as p0, which is putting that percent sign there. It's very unfortunate, but you start. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't. Try parse doesn't actually handle the percent sign and convert it into, say, from 2% to 0 0.02, if only we could have such nice things. So unfortunately, we actually have to convert into the number 2 and then later on divide it by 100, which is very unfortunate. Anyway, I put in 1,000 as my sales rate is 2%, and I get $20, which is what I would expect. So that's just a useful use of the trim end uh, method. All right, and now we get to the replace method, which is a very interesting one. Uh, you give it something that you believe is a substring in your actual string, and then something you want to replace that substring with. So we have an old string and a new string, and we'll find every single instance of the old string, that old substring, contained in string name, and replace it with the new substring. So one thing you can do with the replace um, method is completely get rid of every instance of the substring. So for example, uh, I have a phone number right here. I can replace every instance of the dash with just an empty string to have the same phone number, but now without all the dashes. I can also do something like take the string, this statement is false and then replace every instance of false with true to give this statement is true. You can see it working multiple times uh, for every single dash in this first string right here, and you can see it work with a non-empty um, non new string like this. Now an interesting um, example right here, I have the string containing five A's, five of the letter A, and I'm replacing every instance of two A's next to each other with the string containing blah. Now, it gives blah blah ah. What's happening is, it sees the first two. It's making a copy of this string, by the way. It's not actually replacing anything in this string. It, it makes a copy. And then it says, okay. I see two A's right here. I'm going to replace these with blah. It's doing like a removal and then an insertion. It removes the first two A's and then inserts blah. And now we have the string blah followed by three A's. So then it goes to the next two A's and it says, hey, I've see I see two A's now. I'm going to remove these two, replace them with blah. And then you have blah, blah, ah, right here. It's not five blahs because they're, or sorry, it's not, what would it be? One, two, three, four. It's not four blahs because there are technically four instances of two A's next to each other. 
It's two blobs because the first two are completely removed before the next two are even looked at. So first two removed, blah, now there's three A's left. First two removed, blah, there's one A left. So that's a really interesting quirk about the replace method that's really good to keep in mind. All right, well, that is removing and replacing. Um, really interesting and useful features of string manipulation that we have in Visual Basic.